welcome back. I want you to meet somebody who's a real inspiration to me. He went from living out of his car to becoming a billionaire and running one of the world's most successful hair care brands. And there's something a lot of people might not know. He also owns the world's most popular top shelf tequilas, Patron. Who knew? Please welcome my friend, John Paul DeGioria. <laughs> Fran. Thank you. Nice what is this? Well, I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. <laughs> if it's any of your products, I'm going to love it. Oh, how great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Party in the trailer after yeah. the show. <laughs> well, thank you so much. So now, oh, wait, is there something else in here? Sure. Oh, it's a mixy mixy. Yes, okay, exactly. love it. It's good for love your it. tea. You mix it with your tea. I know. <laughs> well, that'll be for later. Now, tell me, you went from being literally a homeless person to becoming a billionaire. This is a rags to riches story that I can't even believe. So, tell us, how does something like this happen? How do you get from A to B? Well, first of all, people have to realize America still works. I don't care what people yes, say about our country. Yes, it, it does. Still works. I agree. There it goes. It, it I still agree. Works. There's it no place works. in the world like the U.S. of A. What I tell people is we had our company financed, but the guy pulled out, never gave us any money at all. And we had it. We believed so much, my partner and I, that we had the best hair care product in the world. And if hairdressers used it, and hairstylists knew it was the very best, they would recommend it to their customers. So we just said, what the heck, let's start anyways. We have no money right now. In fact, I borrowed $350 from my mom. Aww. My partner was on his last bucks, very last bucks. He was running out of money too and he had $350 and I slept in my car for the first couple of weeks but I believed we could do it and a lot of people say, are there secrets? Well, the answer is this, in anything you do, be prepared for rejection. Mm -hmm. If you're prepared for rejection, no matter what happens, you're gonna overcome it. And as you so well know, Successful people do all the things the unsuccessful people don't want to do. Yeah, if you want to get yeah. something done, it's a busy person. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> now, uh, so now, you know, you, you are a person that knows what it feels like to be poor, and you oh, certainly yeah. know what it feels like now to be wealthy, but what is your attitude about money? Well, money has a lot to do with how you look at it. Do you look at it as power? Do you look at it as a vehicle? We were so broke and so down low, sleeping in the car and everything else, that we started getting money. We felt so grateful. We felt so blessed. It was so easy to say, hey, we've been blessed with this. Maybe the reason is we have to share it with others. Yeah. When there's plenty for me, my family and everyone else, why can't we change the world? And I know a lot of people wait until they get older and then they leave some money to name a temple or a university or something after them. But I think that what we really need to do is look at how can we change the planet while we are here? So, success unshared is failure. Success unshared is failure. Anyone that makes the money and doesn't share it, making the world a better place to live is a failure. So success I unshared agree. is failure. I agree. If you're in a position to do something for the greater good, do it. So now all of your collective, um, you know, companies in, it, you know, support like 25 charities around oh, yeah. the world. And you've done some amazing things in Africa too, which mm -hmm. I'm interested in hearing about. You bet a lot of people look the other way in foreign countries. Went over there once when I was visiting with Nelson Mandela, and I was taken to the back country, and I noticed all these children, ages one day to 12 years old, that everyone neglected, put out almost beaten by the animals. Every one of them was an orphans of AIDS, Aww. and no one cared for them. And this little group called Food for Africa did the best they could to try and house them. That really touched my heart. So along with the future professionals at Paul Mitchell Schools and the people at Patron and, of course, you know, our own family, we started sending them money. Today, we personally feed 8,000 orphans every day, give them a place to live, a nutritious meal, and give them a chance in life. It was, they deserve that chance in life. Now, <laughs> but, 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 but what I want to share, Franny, but, but I, but, what, what I want to share, what I want to share with that and even what we're doing now in the Appalachian Mounds is this. 
Will any of our people that contribute ever meet these orphans? I have. I did photo shoots with them. My family has. Chats are they never will. Why do they do it? Why do our students raise money to help somebody out? Because they know one of the greatest gifts in the world, one of the greatest highs, and I'm a child of the 60s, so I know what high is, okay? <laughs> one of the greatest highs on the planet <laughs> is to be able to do something for somebody else, ask nothing in return. But the fact you know that you did it to make a life a lot better without wanting anything in return is one of the greatest sides on the planet. Yeah. And a lot of people join in. Yes. And not until you start to give do you really start to get. I'm going to need a tissue from this man. I need a tissue. Somebody bring me a tissue. So, you know, um, JP, and you know, I recently came back from South Africa mm -hmm. too, where uh, there is the largest percentage, thanks, sweetie, of uh, AIDS on the planet, and it's all women and specifically right. mothers. So, you know, it's really a godsend that you go and take care of those people, truly. Um, JP is going to stick around, and you should too, because what most people don't know is that I am a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Dan Aykroyd, Dennis Quaid, David Caruso. I know where everybody's bald spot is. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to take on one of Paul Mitchell's top stylists and challenge him to the first Franz cutoff competition. You don't want to miss this. <laughs> don't be nervous. I love doing this. Welcome back. As I promised before the break, we're having Fran's first ever cut off competition. <laughs> I'm going up against the global artistic director of John Paul Mitchell Systems, the wonderfully talented Mr. Robert Cromines. Hi, Robert. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> So now you're an artistic director. What exactly does that mean? And am I like going to be like way out of my league with you? Uh, Fred, he's one of the best in the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'm also a gentleman, and I think I could learn a thing or two. I'm very learned. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> you know, the last time I cut hair, I was charging $5 a haircut, so it's been a while since I've done it. But here are the rules. Okay. We're going to have 15 minutes to create a signature look, and the audience will determine the winner by applause. <laughs> so um, since this is uh, my friend, Coiffure Salon, Robert, you get to pick your first client. I mean, your client first. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, I can just pick one from the audience, yes? Yes. Uh, any, everybody raise your hand. <laughs> just say no to me. Just say no. Just say no. <laughs> you? Uh, 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 no? What about you? Come on. Come okay, on, come great. On. <laughs> You're beautiful. You already look like a model. I and your hair already <laughs> looks perfect. This is why I never became a model, because I look like I'm sitting, standing in a ditch next to people that are <laughs> so tall. But anyway, OK, so now it's my turn to pick somebody. And who am I going to pick? <laughs> I think I'm going to pick Rami, my keyboardist. <laughs> Are, there are no rolls. I'm going to blow the whistle. We start. Wait one minute. Oh, okay. Do Don't do. be nervous. I love doing men. Are you ready? Oh, oh, you have it. Are oh, you yeah. ready? Look at me. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oh, my. Now, Robert. Robert, yes. I noticed that, you know, you're wearing an earring that is actually the Drescher family crest, which is a, a fork. <laughs> well, you're, you're gonna what love this one. What significance does that have for you? Well, I actually cut hair with a fork. Oh, now wait a minute. Look at this saboteur. You've given me a scissor, though it's an expensive one. Uh -huh. It's a righty. So I had a feeling that that might happen, sir. Oh. And I have brought my own personal hair cutting lefty scissor. You know, it's very hard being a lefty in a right handed world. People don't think about that. But see, it has the finger rest on the left. So now I can go ahead and cut. And uh, you're brushing out my hair? 
I am. I am. It's all good. Very, very You're going to love like it. Rock Everybody rock loves my, my haircuts. Are you, are you I was cutting gonna, it dry? I, just, I had a brush. I had a brush just to help. Are you bit. cutting it dry? I am. I am. I am. Oh, but I'm okay. going to use a fork. So this is the fork trick Yeah, that we're and what do. is that little gizmo that's hanging on your belt there? Is that, uh, it, do you want, uh, do you want action or do you not want action? <laughs> I don't quite get that. That's definitely not my family press. <laughs> Well, it's actually a deterrent. My girlfriend bought it for me, so she made a big difference. Uh, all right, excellent. Uh, and Rami, tell me, are you nervous right now? Well, I just don't want too much attention on my family crest, which is uh, <laughs> the bald yarmulke that's brewing over there. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> You're in good company, I'm telling you, that you've got nothing to worry about. You're sexy yeah. as all. Get out. Get so out. it's all good. It's all good, and I'm doing my thing. I love doing men's haircuts. I've been looking at Rami's hair now for days and thinking, hmm, I think I want to get at that. Well, basically, Fran, I mean, I'm going for the Nigel Tufnell meets Serpico, you know, do. Yeah. And I think that's like, that's the, the era that you were cutting hair in. So I, I Exactly, can't, that's true. Can't be too bad. That's true, that's true. Okay, so listen, we are going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll show you the finished look and the audience will decide on a winner. So stick around. Our students have been raising money to get it all from the Paul Mitchell schools. Girls, would you bring the check over, please? <laughs> Welcome back to Fran's first ever cutoff competition. During the break, we completed our looks, and it's almost time for the audience to determine the winner. Now, are you going to look at yours first? This is our first. This is the uh, before and after of Samantha. You ready and to see it? I'll tell reveal her to the audience. All right. All right. And now we're going to do Rami's before and after. So look at yourself, Rami, and away oh. we go. Do you like your hair? Yes, of course. What do you think, Rami? I'm, and remember, I'm I pay me. your check. Put that I'm down. I'm loving me. <laughs> How many agree this is the number one hairstyle? <laughs> and now, Franny. How about France? Good, but they, that's it. That's a French show. Franny D. Cuff, yours yeah. lives. <laughs> You guys have been such a great audience cheering us but, on. But, but before oh. you go, before you go, we want to give everyone in your audience their own Alba Pui Wild Ginger Collection. Shampoos, this is the ultimate in hair care. This is our new one. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate. It's really great. And friend, friend, before you go off the air, you know our students at our school in the last few years have donated $100,000 to Cancer Spencer. Well, our students have been raising money to get it all from the Paul Mitchell schools. Girls, would you bring the check over, please? On behalf of all the students at our school, I'd like to present you, friend, with this check for $50,000 oh to Kansas Spencer, all for future professionals. Oh, my God. Oh, thank right. you, ladies. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, and thank you, best of them. I love you. Thanks for so generously supporting Kansas Schmanter. If you people at home would like to as well, please go to FranDresher.com. And when we come back, we'll sit down with Grammy Award-winning musician who turned her pain into purpose. Stay right where you are. Yeah.